There are a few problems that I have with the way that mobs spawn in Minecraft. The first problem being is that these mobs don't really belong with each other. What does a skeleton and a spider have in common with a creeper? And what does that have in common with, I don't know, a zombie villager? What does that have in common with endermen or, or, or pigs? These mobs live alongside each other and it's just bizarre. It, it goes against expectation. Now sure, in the early versions of Minecraft there weren't many mobs and so this was quite acceptable. But times have changed now and this just feels messy. Now the other problem is, is that this same cast of mobs will spawn in the desert, except zombies have a texture change and a slightly different effect. They have the same mobs in the forest, the same mobs in the swamp with the exception of maybe slimes, the same mobs in the savanna. It gets boring and repetitive and there's not really much reason to venture out. So in the Tempest's box, I think it's time to change this. I think it's time we get a new cast of creatures that we can deal with. I think it's time for bugs in the plains and all kinds of different creatures. So uh, I have been working pretty hard. I've created three new mobs. Uh, don't worry, the old mobs that I've created will still remain in the Tempest's box. Um, they'll just be spawning in different places. Um, so these bobs Bob's. <laughs> Hi Bob. I'm gonna call you Bob now. Bob's dead. Okay, so this is a, uh, a bull ant. I'm very happy with the uh, the way the model looks. Uh, bull ants, um, they're, they're just like zombies, except there are no zombies here. They, they don't belong in the plains anymore. I'm gonna make zombies spawn in places like, I don't know, the mega tiger and the dark oak forests. Not in the plains. I don't feel like they belong in the plains. So, I'm really happy with uh, the way the ant has turned out. Oh yeah, spiders, they get to stay. They get to stay. So um, yeah, let's just take a look at these ants. They just they just behave like normal ants. Um, the follow range isn't 40 blocks though, it's 16, so they only really bother you if you get near them. Um, now because they're ants, they don't really do much damage either. Because they're ants, of course, they can go under one block structures as well. So I guess they're a little bit unique in that sense. Spiders, still behave like spiders. Now these guys here, they look threatening. Well, that's a lot of them. They they look threatening, but um, they've got a very, very small follow range, so they won't really bother you unless you bother them. Hey guys. They're quite slow as well. I'm planning on giving them like a charge ability, so like randomly they'll kind of headbutt you. Um, and I also need to make it so when they sting you, they give you maybe a small amount of poison. Not Nothing too drastic. They're supposed to be mostly peaceful. Um, now due to the limitations of Minecraft, they only spawn uh, during the day, um, oh no, during the night I should say, um, but that's okay, I'm quite happy with them only coming out at night. Um, it's an imaginary creature called the Ratch. <laughs> I really love the way the model turned out. I also need to make it so they don't take fall damage and maybe they, they float down as well um, from heights. Spiders, of course, they behave like normal spiders. And there is one other mob around here which, oh, I'm gonna have to spoil how they spawn, won't, don't I? Okay, basically, if an enderman detects that it's in the plains biome, it turns into this thing. Now, I do agree, the model does need a bit of work. That's fine. I'm happy with doing a little bit of tweaks to the model. So, um, seeing as though ogres don't really spawn in the plains anymore, they're gonna, they, I'm gonna move them to the forest, um, these guys are going to spawn instead, um, so they do have the block breaking ability, um, not nearly as powerful as the ogre. They're a lot slower, um, but they do have this awesome ground pound ability. So can you show me what it looks like? There we go. Get a little bit of slowness as well and I take a little bit of damage. It's an area of, of effect, of course. Um, now the other thing that this guy can do is disable your shield. Um, overall, it's not a very threatening mob because of how slow it is. It's, it's hard to kill, um, but it's easy to evade. See, yeah, just 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 evade it. <laughs> it's probably the best way to deal with it. I'm pretty much done with the plains biome for now. But now I'm going to take a look at the desert and see what mobs are here, what don't belong. Obviously the husk belongs, I'm quite happy with that. The husk though, I think the skeleton, the skeleton definitely needs some work. So I'm going to create 
a new mob called the Sand Skull. And yeah, let's just start with the model. I want it to behave like a basic skeleton. Maybe the arrows give some kind of potion effect. Maybe it drops sand. We'll see how we go. But anyway, I'm going to drop into paint and we're going to change the texture of you. So we are going to grab some sand and a skull. I've also grabbed this husk head just for reference here. But I'm going to make this super, super simple. We're just going to paste in a skull here. Next thing I'm going to do is add a layer. I'm going to copy and paste sand over that. And I'm going to set this to multiply. I mean, multiply doesn't look too bad. I mean, obviously we need to fix up lots about this. Let's see what uh, additive. No, that's way too bright. Color burn. That's a bit gross. Color dodge. Not way too bright. Reflect. Too weird. Glow. Not really happy with that either. Overlay could be nice. I still think it's a little bit bright though. We'll just see how we go. Difference, definitely not. Lighten, nah. Darken, just, just looks like you spilt coffee on you. Screen, nope, not happy. And Zor, nah. Alright, we're going to go with um, Multiply seems to be the best one. Now looking at the Husk one, you can see that there's way too much noise on this texture, even though it's uh, 16 by 16. This texture here is also 16 by 16. Actually, it looks more to be 8 by 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, it looks like it's an 8 by 8 texture. Okay, let's let's go with that. I'll, I'll, I'll play ball. Hey, that improved it pretty quickly. So, today I learned that mob textures are actually supposed to be 8 by 8. Oh well, the more you know. Um, by the way, if you're wondering how I'm going to add this onto the skeleton, I've just created a, a skull and torso model. So I'm going to put the face here. And then I'm going to create a custom torso, maybe have some kind of like Indiana Jones cloak on it. And then I'm going to let the legs and the arms animate themselves. Now I just thought this would be heaps better than using leather because it just looks like using leather. I'm just hoping that the skull doesn't turn um, at different times to the model. But uh, I don't really know how I'm going to solve that. We might end up having to animate legs and arms for it, which I don't really want to do because you can see that the arms are wobbling like that. You can't really do that with models. So we'll just see how we go. I'm going to try and get this as close as I can though. Now I do think that the texture should be a little bit darker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this. And yeah, it's a little bit too dark. Maybe about negative 60 here. And then I'm just going to do the same for the other textures. So if I grab the side skull here, it's going to look like... Alright, I have to resize it to 8x8, of course. So we'll grab the side skull, put that there. That's what the side of the skull is going to look like. And then finally, the top of the skull is going to look like that. Hmm, pretty happy with how that's going to be. And now I need to create a torso. Here's a bit of harsh reality for you guys. I cannot change the texture of the legs and the arms without changing the texture of every single skeleton. So uh, this sand skull is kind of a, a bomb. Not the bomb, but a bomb. I'm going to have to... <laughs> look how weird it is. It's, it's half its torso turns and the other half remains. I don't like it at all. So I'm going to have to give it some arms and give it some legs and I'm going to have to give it a custom animation. Obviously it's not going to look as smooth as this, uh, but I can at least give it a go. I mean, I might be able to give it, I don't know, a dress just to make it float. Kind of like the way I did this this mob, it just, just floats, it doesn't really need a walking animation. I don't really know what to do. Maybe... Ah... Uh... I'm going to have to do this off camera. I can't really think right now. See that missing texture there? I'm going to try and... Can, thanks. I'm going to try and turn this into hair. Need to make it wider, of course, but I think having a hairy mane on the back might look good. It might make the rest of the texture acceptable. See, I don't want to give up that bow animation. That needs to be telegraphed to the player, otherwise it would just... It would look weird just having a floating bow next to it, unless I actually make that part of the lore. You know how blazers, they they have those, those whizzly things on the side. Anyway, we're going to make a hair texture now. So, I've googled brown hair close up. I'm going to go with this 
Shutterstock hair. That seems good. So we'll grab that and let's just create a new texture here. I'm only going to grab uh, this portion here because that's the bit that I'm interested in. And I'm going to make this 32 by 32. Even then, that's still a little bit much. Let's make it 16 by 16. That's a lot more acceptable. And we're just going to give this the hair treatment here. Ultimate sand treatment. And we are going to set you to multiply mode. And there we are. We have some nice hair. How we can turn this into this using a Minecraft texture. And just as I suspected, it looks absolutely awful. It just looks weird having a, a block. So, you know what? I really don't know what to do about this guy. I'm going to go with that blaze idea that I had before where it's meant to be holding a bow and I can have like an animated texture that will make it look cool. It won't look like an authentic skeleton, but it's certainly better than the mess that I'm in at the moment. All I want is a decent looking skeleton model. Why can't I get this? <laughs> I suck at modeling and I've even with heaps and heaps of practice, I still can't get anything right by the looks of things. If I could just change the skeleton texture, that would solve my problems, but I'm not able to at the moment. I have to wait until that feature comes out later. Not really sure how I'm going to deal with this whole situation here. It's a tricky one. Maybe I should just make this, um, oh, I know it should be four sided with a robe or something like that. And we'll see how we go. It's been three hours. And on this day, I shall go with this. I know that the bottom is white and I didn't really want white, but hey, at least there's some kind of texture variation anyway. And it looks like it fits more in the desert than uh, something like this. And the other plus is that um, it won't burn on the daylight. See, I like that a lot more than I like that. So that's what I'm gonna go with. I stacked one on top of the other because why not? Let's see how this, yeah, they just shoot each other. Well, there goes my uh, hopes and dreams, I suppose. Uh, it's, uh, it's mildly disappointing how they just shoot each other like that. Well, it took a very, very long time, but the scorpion model, replacing creepers in this biome, is finally done. Oh, I just got stung immediately. Um, that's actually quite rare, they don't normally do that. So yeah, I've added a stinging ability. I had to do a little bit of research to see how scorpions actually behave in real life, 
it turns out that they use their nippers more than they use their stinger. Their stinger is kind of like a last resort. This is for a particular species of scorpion though, I can't remember what it was, but I'm basing it off that one, and it was kind of this colour as well, so I just copied and pasted the colours as you might have seen in, in the video uh, that I, or well, the time lapse that I did. Uh, so when you actually do get stung by this, it's stinging a lot more than usual, it should only uh, do that quite rarely. Uh, I get two minutes of poison, two minutes of hunger, and two minutes of um, slowness. So since it's rare, I thought, why not make it brutal for the player? If they get stung by a scorpion, it's like, this never happens. And then you're in a really, really tough situation where you're eating, trying to get away, and yeah, overall, if you get stung by one of these, it is a nightmare. It is now a day later, and I would like to introduce you guys a new mob, model done by me, which will be kind of obvious once I show it to you. Where can I spawn it? I'll just spawn you here. It's the Ore Golem. It blends in with the terrain, of course. Um, in terms of special abilities, not much. It's just, it's just like a, a zombie, except I think it fits in more underground than it does above ground. So zombies are almost entirely replaced as zombie villagers though they're still present so these guys are quite common under here i'm going to make it so they very rarely drop coal and iron ore but most commonly drop stones so they do have some kind of inherent use in that sense i spent a very very long time on the model i'm still not entirely happy with it but i think it's a good placeholder just for now the other thing i wanted to show you is a very very rare event if you are close to the void, I'm on layer 12 at the moment, then void gas has a chance to spawn. Oh, it's very, very flammable as you can see. I think that was from the, the lava lake over there. Yeah, the lava lake would have detonated it. So you can see the explosions aren't that large, uh, but they do create a lot of fire and they do chain as well. Let's do this over here now. So you can see that the void gas, well, you probably already know, but it's just bats. So it floats around everywhere. What? Are you serious already? I get withered by it as well. Is there a lava lake down here? It must have been from all this fire. I should probably move into a, a better place. Okay, let's try it here. So this is how the void gas behaves. If you get withered by it, yeah, good luck. Don't blow up. Don't blow up. Please don't. It's very flammable stuff. That one's going to go. Any second now. Sometimes it takes a while for it to, to light up, but once it does, there we go. And it chains, as I mentioned. So this will make caving a lot more exciting. It's a very rare event though, so the chances of you actually running into this is slim, but when you do, it's exciting, it's new, and it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Well, is that one gonna go? No, nah, it's not close enough. I should probably show you guys what actually goes on behind the scenes here. I want to create a cave in event that only happens between, uh, let's say, layers 15 and 30. What I'm gonna go and do is I'm going to create the cave in event here and we're going to execute from anything that has the uh, cave in ability. We'll summon a creeper. Now this is going to not do much. <laughs> We're going to make it have an explosion radius of one. Um, so it's it's mainly aesthetic. It's just going to do bugger all damage to the terrain. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so it spawns in a bunch of gravel right above it. And I'm also going to make it replace stone zero only. So overall, pretty harmless might create a lot of gravel under the ground, but that's yet to be seen. All I can do to fix that is just make the event a little bit more rare. We'll see how we go anyway. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to so shot one, but two creepers, hopefully another explosion and fling the gravel. This uh, cave in event here is just gravel. Do is we don't need all this. Word. Cave let's biome. copy all that into Mr. Goretto's generator. Go back up to the commands. And we will do And let's that. just summon an enderman around here. Alright, let's try this again. Not too bad, I'm just worried that the player will never ever see that happen. 
I mean, it's a nice effect, but how often do you think an Enderman is just going to spawn at the right place at the right time while the player is present? Easy fix, actually. All I have to do is just execute from any player, and we're going to say uh, within 12 blocks. So as, as soon as it comes within 12 blocks of the player, then it will activate this sequence here. Take two, we're going to summon an Enderman over, all the way over there. You can see he disappeared, however, that cave-in entity is still going to be alive. And don't worry, if I go really far away, it will despawn like a normal bat. So let's just see what happens if I approach this place. It did look a bit weird having gravel just appear. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to change it so it's just a whole bunch of stone. Take three. I hope showing you guys my process will help you appreciate how much effort goes into this. That's a little bit more realistic. There we go, I saw it. Going into game mode zero now. That is actually pretty dang convincing. I mean, it spawns in a lot of gravel, but it only happens when the player is nearby, so I think that's pretty acceptable. Let's let it loose. Come on. Let's see this happen. I'm actually scared, because uh, I know that there could be a cave-in at any moment. There we go. Small amount of FPS lag when it happens, but it's no big deal. I think it was just only a small drop of frames and only lasted less than a second as well. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the way the cave-ins work. I'm going to leave it to there. There's a lot more that I want to share with you, but that can wait for another episode. So in the meantime, thanks to Data Crusader, Peter, Mr. Demon N, Zach, Armin Unstoppable, Patrick, Crazy Pets 321, Equated, Poker to Doge, The Dusty Bunny, Corp, and Mablor for being my patrons. Thank you everyone for watching. I will see you in the next one.